because in that periodic table, every number you see there that's related to the proton and neutrons is related to the grams per mole. So that's why chemists use grams all the time, right? Grams is not an SI unit. Uh, kilograms is an SI unit. But chemists, most of the time, have conversations in grams. Why? Because our nifty-difty periodic table is in grams for one reason. Another reason is it tends to be something you can hold in your hand. All right? And that's what chemists work on, is they're trying to make soap better that they can just hold in their hand and run some reactions. All right? Okay, so here's what I want to do. If I had 38.3 grams of something called nitrogen dioxide, how many moles of nitrogen dioxide would I have? All right. So if I had 38.3 grams of nitrogen dioxide, how many moles would I have? Well, 38.3 grams. Now, in one mole of NO2, how much does that weigh in grams? All right. So how am I going to get that? I'm going to go to the periodic table. And I'm going to add up a total molecular weight. So nitrogen weighs 14, right? How much does oxygen weigh? 16. And there's two of them. So that's 14 plus 16 plus 16 for a total of what? What's 32 plus 16? Do I need to get my calculator? 44. Right? Like I say, teaching organic all morning this morning. I'm in no mood to even think right now. So this is 46 grams per one mole. All right. So 38.3 divided by 46 is what? 0 0.83 mol uh, moles of NO2. Now let me ask you a question. If I had a full mole of NO2, how much would it weigh? Now, a full mole, how many grams would it weigh? Whatever that is. 40. The 46. Right. That's in grams per one mole. So if I had a full mole, it would weigh 46 grams. Well, is this a full mole? No. So you expect that number to be just a little bit shy. Okay. Now, do you see how that's a working for us? Okay, let's try another one. Let's just say that we've got something here like... Uh, 92.3 grams of SOCl2. I want to know how many moles that is. Well, what am I going to put on the bottom as far as units go? Grams, right? And now that's simple. That, that goes back to um, chapter 2 that tells us that these two things have to go bye-bye. All right, now we're looking for moles, so what goes on the top? One mole. Okay. Well, how much does that weigh? How much does one mole of this weigh? 32, 32 plus 16 plus 35 and a half. 83.5. Yep, thank you. There's two of them. Uh, 119. Is that better? 119 grams. Is that what you guys are getting? Sulfur weighs 32 when looking at your periodic table. Chlorine weighs 35 and a half, and there's two of them. And oxygen weighs 16. All right, so is this number going to be greater than 1 or less than 1? Less than 1, right? Because... If this number is going to be 1, immediately this would have to be 116. So, 92.3 divided by the second of the answer for a total of 0 0.776 moles of SOCl2. So this is a wonderful way to go from grams to moles. Now, what if you wanted to go the other way? 
And then I'm going to tell you why this is so important. What if you had three moles of, somebody name a compound. Glucose, way to go, Brittany, C6H12O6, <laughs> all right? Any compound would do, right? So if you've got three moles of glucose, how many total grams do you have? All right, we'll take a look at this one. Here we've got one mole of C6H12O6. Now how many grams does that weigh? You guys got that yet? Five hundred and forty grams. Is that what you're getting? Final answer. Because you go to the periodic table and carbon weighs twelve, so that's twelve times six plus twelve. Now oxygen weighs sixteen. How many of them are there? Sixteen. I mean six. So you have to add all that up to get one eighty. Is there anybody in the dark about where the numbers are coming from? No. Of course, now of course you just want to know why it is we have to know these ideas about grams and moles, right? Well, it turns out that whenever you are talking about chemistry, these little numbers right here are directly related to moles. So, you know, that's how we know that pot has this chemical formula, or the THC. That's how we know that morphine has this chemical formula. All right, that's how we know glucose has this chemical formula, 6 moles of carbon, 12 moles of hydrogen, and 6 moles of oxygen within this huge sample. All right, and that's what they call like the law of the definite proportions. Everything is always in that ratio. You see, no matter where you find water, what's the ratio of water? H2O. That's based on the mole. That's why this is important. See, it does not matter if you're in Africa, the Czech Republic, it doesn't matter. If you're finding water, you're finding H2O. All right, that don't change. Now, naturally, various things in the water change. I mean, of course, right? Different types of impurities and whatnot. But H2O does not change. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so let's just suppose that we were synthetic chemists. All right. That means that we are chemists who want to make things. So, what would we be interested in making? New things or old things? New things. Right? So we're going to set up a hypothetical scenario for the next 15 or 20 minutes. Hypothetically, I am your boss and we're having a meeting. All right, and this is not uncommon. Now, this group's a little bit big for a research group, but they are out there this big, especially some of the bigger universities. Normally, there's about six or eight of you, okay? And here's what I want you to do. I want you to make me a new compound that contains copper and chlorine. That means one that ain't heard of yet. All right. So, what's the first step then in our process? If we were in the research environment, what would be the first thing we got to do? To what's that now? We need to find the bonding. The bonding.